Okay, so uh, we are in week five. We already finished with uh, the ADT bag, which is what we covered last week. Uh, if you get stuck on those, just look a couple a couple of weeks down, and uh, the solution is going to be in there. Like in week six, you have the solution for that one. Uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the different kinds of sorts <clears throat> because we have to. So um, let's have a look at what uh, chapter 11 talks about real quick. And I also have some lecture notes. Let's look at this. Oh, that's the CPP, main CPP. Okay. So this is the usual, the thing that we, we pretty much did already. Uh, you have an array, encapsulated array, array inside of an object. The constructor showing the array, uh, deleting in a specific index, inserting in a specific index, Deleting a specific element, uh, using the bubble sort, uh, select sort. That's those are the things we're going to talk about today, and some other things. So let's have a look at this. So there's different types of sorting algorithms, and they all have, I guess you could say, some strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the basic sort that we learned. In the CSIS 45 class is the bubble sort, right? And what's the bubble sort? Well, you see a picture of it on the class page. Uh, and it is basically the one on the way in the left. You start with, you know, list of numbers in a random order. You're comparing the left to the right. And if the left is bigger than the right, you swap their values. Okay? <clears throat> and so on and so on and so on. So... Um, what happens is you actually have one loop that does this, right? So we have one loop that allows you to go through the whole list of numbers and compare left to the right. Inside of that loop, you have an if. You check to see if the left is bigger than the right, and you swap. And then, of course, there's the swap, okay? And uh, generally speaking, uh, there is a you know, way for you to figure out how efficient the different algorithms are, and that's one of the topics in this class. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, let me pause this just thing just first. Okay, so there's also the bubble selection and insertion sorts here, right? That's, that's the little link that I'm going to go over in, a, in just a second. Uh, and in it, what I'm doing is I'm using the Lafour textbook, which is actually, well, he has two textbooks. He has one in Java, the other one is in C++, to show you these different kinds of sorts and their efficiencies. Because I don't think the Karano book will probably do the very good job. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I am going to let you read through this the PowerPoint in your own time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this link right here, okay? Which is going to be this here, the different sortings, okay? There's different kinds of sorts be beyond what we're, what I'm gonna show you today. There's some more advanced ones, uh, like the quick sort, the shell sort. There's different kinds of sorts. Some of them, you know, were pretty much invented by you know some of the founders of computer science people who got their PhDs for writing these sorting algorithms so don't expect it to you know to be for it to be an easy algorithm but it will be relatively easy for you hopefully to understand these ones the basic ones that we're going to do today okay so first of all uh, there's I already mentioned to you there's the bubble sort all right and in here I have a sample program you know I have basically the same encapsulated array that I had from before, right? Which is just an array inside of a class, right? And it has a number of elements, it has a constructor, it has a way for you to add at the end of the array, it has a way for you to show the array, delete a specific element, insert first, sort the thing with bubble sort, sort it with selection sort, sort it with insert sort, 
there's your swap. Uh, there is also an insert and order, delete index, no dubs. So basically a lot of these things that we kind of had to do already incorporated into one bigger program that now has a couple of extra different sorts, right? So we already had the bubble sort, but we're going to talk about it and what makes it not so efficient. Uh, so sorting is important because if you're trying to search for data, uh, searching through a sorted list of numbers is a lot faster than sorting through an unassorted list of numbers. For example, if you have 100 numbers and you're trying to figure out, you know, trying to guess a specific number, at most you would guess seven times if you are doing it with sorted numbers, right? Using a binary search. And what was the binary search? Binary search is, I tell you, okay, guess a number between zero and 100. What will be your first guess? You guess in the middle, you guess the 50. And if I tell you no, it's lower than that, then you know now the range of values is between zero to 50. So the next guess will be half of that, right? You're splitting it every time. And then at most, you can guess the number in seven guesses, right? But if the, or if the order wasn't, you know, if the numbers were not ordered in advance, then you could end up guessing up to 99 times, worst case scenario. Right, or on average, you could say that you're gonna guess about 50 times, right? For, if we take the average of millions and millions of guesses, it'll be about 50 times on average, how, how many times you're gonna guess. Versus the, you know, the average time for you to guess with a binary search won't even be seven, right? It will be probably less than seven, maybe three and a half, I mean, something like that, four guesses, three guesses, okay? So it's a lot faster to do something when the numbers are sorted. So it's very important for you to know how to sort them efficiently because sorting last large sets of numbers can become very cumbersome. Uh, and the book actually has some examples that, you know, basically, okay, if we use this particular sort, you can sort this, the thing using a supercomputer and it will take slower than if we use some of these more efficient sorts on a basic laptop, okay? So, uh, the first is the basic sort, the, the bubble sort. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do with bubble sort is, again, just a quick review from before. Uh, you know, just remember that the computer does not have the ability to just eyeball a bunch of different numbers or, you know, I guess there's a baseball team or whatever, basketball. That guy's kind of tall for a baseball team. So uh, you, you, yeah, you, you can't look at, uh, you cannot have a computer look at all the things at once and just say, oh, okay, that's the biggest one. It does not have the ability to do comparison of more than two things at a time, right? So I can compare variable A to variable B, and then maybe and something else and something else, but the, ba the basic condition, which is checking to see if something's true or false, can only be done with two things in computer science. So we're limited to that way of thinking for computers and we're going to have to, you know, restrict ourselves in how we solve, we solve these different things, All right? So what happens is it basically boils down to a couple of things. We're, you know, for all these different sorts, you know, the restriction is we're going to be comparing two different items and maybe we're going to be swapping their places or maybe we're going to grab one, put it to the side and then do something else and then eventually move it to the correct place. Those are the kind of things we're going to do, but basically we're still going to compare two items at a time only. Okay, so the first one is your bubble sort, and the bubble sort happens to be the least efficient of all of the sorts, and uh, so that makes it easy to write the sorting algorithm or the, the code for the sorting algorithm, uh, and it actually makes it, you know, very inefficient and slow. However, okay, so. Uh, Basically, here's your picture of the bubble sort, right? So you have all these different players lined up in a different order, but the computer can only compare two things at a time. And just like that little picture that I showed you with the animation, it compares two things at the same time. If the left is bigger than the right, you swap their values. If this one is not bigger than the right, it stays as it is. Then you go to the next one. Is this one bigger than this one? Yes, it is, so swap their values and so on and so on and so on and then until this tallest guy ends up being all the way at the end, right? And then when that's done, you go back to the beginning and then you start, start comparing the next two numbers. Okay, is this one bigger than this one? No. 
Is this one bigger than this one? Yes, so then swap their values. And so on and so on and so on. And when you do all that stuff, then the second biggest person is going to end up to the sec at the second place from the left. And that's your bubble sort, okay? So the bubble sort is, uh, and there's a link in there with some, uh, with, with that same animation that I have on the web page. Okay, so the efficiency of bubble sort is, it goes something like this. So the first time you go through all these different players, you're going to have nine comparisons so that you can move that biggest player all the way to the right. Second time you go through this, you're going to have to do it eight times because now that you've moved the biggest one all the way to the right, you don't have to go all the way to the right, right? You go one less, so now you have to do up to eight you know, comparisons and swaps. Then you have to do seven, then you six, then five, etc., etc., etc. So a total of 45 for 10 items, okay? So in general, generally speaking, the formula can be, you know, summarized as something like this. You have n numbers, you're gonna have, you know, you, you're gonna have to do this n minus one times, plus n minus two times, plus n minus three times, etc., 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 which results in n times n minus one divide by two, okay? Now, what the book is going to tell you is, uh, in not a whole lot of, uh, well, yeah. So basically, what the book is going to tell you is, um, we can pretty much, you know, when you, for a ha when you have very large numbers, uh, you can basically ignore the n minus one, okay? So, not n minus one, but you can ignore the minus one and the n minus one part. Right, which is basically going to result in n times n divided by two, which is n squared divided by two, okay? And uh, what we can do is for the big O notation, we're really not concerned so much with uh, constants, right? So you could pretty much ignore the div divided by two. For again, if you have tremendously huge numbers, you know, if you have a billion and you divide by two, of course it's not as big as a billion, but it's still, a huge number so we can actually grab the two and take it out and put it as a constant right so the the big O notation really does not concerns itself so much with constants but the variables and what varies in this case it's the n okay so if we put the divided by two in front of the n squared it could be something like k times n squared where k is some constant okay and which basically we can say that is an efficiency of n squared, okay? And n squared, efficiency of n squared is one that grows exponentially, right? So with, that is the, the, the worst possible uh, efficiency of any of these different sorts, okay? The, you know, the, the fastest one will be basically every time you insert something, it's always inserted at the same constant super fast speed, right? Basically one. Okay, and the worst one will be the n squared. And in between, there's a log of n or n log n. There's different efficiency of this uh, big n notation. Okay, uh, so uh, selection sort, that's the next one. All right, so let's look at, uh, let me look at this thing real quick here. All right, so this is your, this is your sort, sorting algorithm. Okay, uh, and I have uh, kind of, written uh, not the best kind of uh, bubble sort because my bubble sort goes all the way to the end every time. So the first time, the, the inner loop is the one that compares two things next to each other using the if, and then they also have a swap just to pull the code away from that, make it a little neater, right? So this is my swap method, which allows you to swap elements of two different uh, indexes in an array. And uh, that's it. Right, so you have this loop on the inside, which happens n times. You have the other loop on the out, the outside, which happens basically another n times. So the if inside of this inner loop is going to happen n squared times, which means that the swap is basically potentially going to happen n squared times also. Okay, so lots of swaps in the bubble sort, and so the swap has an n squared you know, big O notation, if you want to say that. Now there's a way to improve this thing, and that is to use uh, selection sort. Okay, so how does a selection sort work? Well, the selection sort 
reduces the number of swaps, basically. Okay, so let's look at the picture that I have on the class webpage, right, the little graph. All right, so here's the select sort. Wait for it to get to the beginning so we can see that the things start from, from the beginning. So the select sort is in the middle. All right, so we start with a random list of numbers. What you're going to do is you start with the first one, you look at the smallest element, and then you swap it with the first one. Then you go to the second element, you go through all the list of the numbers, you find the second biggest, and you swap it with the second number, right? That's what's happening. Then you go to the third number, you look for the smallest number, it was the two, swap. So basically what you're doing is you're not swapping every single time, but you're swapping after you have gone through the whole list of numbers, okay? And the effect of this is now we have, you know, we still have, we're still going to have one loop inside of another loop, so the thing, the whole thing is going to happen, the loops are going to happen n squared times, which is not a very efficient way to sort things, but the way we have improved the thing is we're not swapping until we get all the way to the end of the inner loop, okay? So uh, that's the idea here. So that's, that's basically the little, the little picture here. So you start with the first one, right? You're at the first person, you go through the list of all the other ones, find the minimum and you swap it with the first one. Then you go to the second one, you look for this, for, you know, for it, you're looking for if any of, what is the smallest number or if any other number is smaller than this one, okay? When you find the smallest, uh, unless this one is the smallest, if it is the smallest, then you don't, you don't touch it, okay? Then you go to the third one, you look through all these other ones, you find the smallest one, that's the smallest one, and then you swap it with the third one, okay? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when this whole thing is done, the, the players have been sorted. Okay, so how does this work? Well, you have, this is the algorithm. And again, find the smallest element and swap values of, the ele of that element and the first element. Then find the second smallest, swap the value of that element and the second element, find the third smallest, etc., etc., etc. So, how does it go? For, well, this is, this is your loop, which happens to go through all the different players, right? And this here starts at one player to the right of your current player, right? So the, this one here, again, this one starts at zero, so we're going to start at, the, at player number zero. This one starts at player number one, because there's no point of us to compare player zero to itself, okay? And then what we're going to do is... This thing still goes through the, you know, the, the inner loop, still goes through all the different players, right? But what it does is it just compares to see if, uh, basically what you do is this. So you say min index is equal to the current index. What is the current index? Well, the current index is the first player, okay? And then what you're going to do is, you're going to go through all the other players and you're going to retain the index of the smallest player. That's what this is saying, right? So if any of any array i, so if i starts at one, right? If any array i is less than the array with the minimum index, which is the first one, then the minimum index is equal to i, right? So you're basically just grabbing the smallest, the index of the smallest player. And then when this loop is, has done its job, then we do the swap, okay? So notice before we had a for loop, then we had another for loop, and then we had an if, and then inside of the if we had the swap. So the, the swap itself happened n square times, as far as big O notation is concerned. Now we move that outside, so it happens n times, okay? It only happens as many times as the outer loop, okay? So that's your basic select sort. And I have some examples in there of, you know, how it works out, right? And I highly recommend that you do this in order for you to really retain this stuff. Don't just take my word for it. Don't just look at the picture and say, oh, I got this. No, start with a real number, you know, start with a real list of numbers, just like I showed you in here. And you go, okay, well, first, initially, what is my min index, my min index? So notice what I'm doing. I'm not even looking at this loop here. I'm going to kind of write it out for every iteration of the outer loop. So this is basically the first time we go through this outside for loop. Right, which is when min, min index is equal to zero because it's equal to the current index. Right, then what happens to this inside loop? Well, if i is equal to the current index plus one and min index is equal to the current index, that means that this thing starts at one and it's still going to go on the same way as before. I mean, any other time after that. 
then see what happens. Uh, which one is the min index? Well, the min index is going to be this, right? The one, and then you swap. What are you swapping? Swapping current index with min index, right? So you're swapping the zero with index zero, one, two, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So important for you to write it out, in my opinion, so that you can understand how it works. Don't just, you know, don't just read it, think that you know it, and then just press the believe button. Okay, otherwise you're screwed in the future. Okay, just get in the habit of testing these things and looking at how it works. Okay, so that's basically the selection sort. Um, and uh, you can read more about it in here, but it's pretty much what I just told you. Uh, and again, uh, it is, it, the loops themselves run n squared times, but the actual swaps are n times. So that basically is what reduces you know, makes it more efficient over the bubble sort. So you can do a higher number of sorts in this with selection You sort. can do faster sorts with selection sort. It'll just be faster. You can do yeah. the same amount of yes. bubble sort, but it's not as fast, right? Yeah, the bubble sort will be the slowest one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, and uh, lecture notes. Yeah, that's the main CPP. So you, you can look at that. I have it posted. Uh, the next thing is the insert sort. Okay, and the insert sort is, in my opinion, the most challenging of these three. Okay, but it also happens to be the most, uh, you know, the fastest one. Okay, and then I have another graph in there that I haven't posted. Let me see if I have it on the other one. Uh, no, I'll, I'll post it. There's, I have a graph that shows you the different uh, sorts. In fact, oh, let me get, uh, maybe it's in 27. Sorts. Yeah, this one right here. I gotta post this link for this class. So this link right here, the sorting algorithm graphs, so it shows you some of these uh, you know, sorting algorithms. So you have insert sort, you have select sort, you have bubble sort, right? So we did the bubble and we did, we did the select sort, I think, right? And now we're gonna do the insert sort, okay? Yeah, insert sorts last. So there's also a shell sort, merge sort, heap sort. Uh, the merge sort is a recursive, recursive sort. So it's kind of pretty confusing, but you know, the, the general idea of how it works makes sense but the actual implementation because we don't we don't have the tendency to think recursively it's hard to just wrap your mind around it uh, some of these other ones the shell the quick the the uh, the heap uh, we're going to talk about later some of them are you know basically just a really advanced sorts I can show you how it looks and I can have you type the code but I there's no way for me to expect you to write this thing from scratch I just, I don't, okay? Maybe if you're, you're doing your PhD in computer science and you've done computer science for a long time, yeah, you can do the, you know, the shell sort or the quick sort, you know, off the top of your head. Okay, uh, this heap sort. So the merge sort is something that we can do uh, with recursion. Uh, the heap sort is something that we can do once I introduce uh, trees, All right? So remember there's different data structures in this class one of those data structures, well, we first we have a linked list. Linked list is like you have a list of things, one links, links to the other, and then the next one links to the next one. They're all tied just like a link, one with each other. You can have a double link, you can have a single link, you can have a circular link, circular list, but it's basically they're all just tied one after the other, okay? But there is another structure called a tree, which is basically like an organizational chart you have you know, different branches, you have leaves, you have nodes and these kind of things. And depending on how you arrange these different trees, one of the possible arrangements is called a heap. We have a binary tree, we have a red and black trees, we have a heap, okay? And what is a heap? It's a, it's a special kind of tree where the highest thing happens to be all the way at the top. Okay, so it, it, and every time you remove from the tree, if I wanna take off the top from the tree, there's an algorithm that just bubbles up the highest thing all the way to the top. So what you can do is you can create a data structure called a heap and then just take off the highest thing 
to take off the first thing on the heap every time and then that will allow you to basically get an unsorted list of things or numbers and sort them out just by picking off the, the thing that's on top of the heap every time. But we're not gonna go there today. Okay, uh, so anyway, this, this thing here shows you that um, it actually, the efficiency of these different uh, algorithms might be a little bit faster depending on what uh, kind of data you're working with, right? Is it the data completely sorted? Is it random? Is it in reverse order, right? And are there some repeating elements in there? Okay, so depending on that, let me just hit the play all, you'll see that some of them go faster than others, but usually the bubble storage is gonna take its you know, slowest time. All right. So you can see these ones at the end are all the way done, right? Insertion sorts, it's done. Selection sorts, yeah, it took a little longer. All right, so these are, your, these are this is the efficiency of the sort, sorting algorithms. And that's why it takes, you know, it, it benefits you to, to learn how they work, okay? Uh, and again, it depend, the efficiency depends on how, you know, how random the data is, is it already kind of sorted, that kind of things. Okay, and some of these sorts, they actually, you know, some of these more advanced sorts, they actually take, they, they use aspects of the previous sorts in order to work, okay? So some of, some of them might use insertion sort for a little bit and then switch to a selection sort and then do, do the rest of the magic somehow in some other way, okay? So going back to the insert sort. So, all right, let's look at the insert sort here. So how does it work? Uh, the insert sort makes sense if you actually kind of have a list of things that are kind of sorted already. Okay, so in the beginning it's not going to make a whole lot of sense, right? But wait, wait for it to get a couple of numbers sorted. Okay, so so far it doesn't, it won't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, but so at this point we can start talking about it. So you have, you're going to go, you're going to start at some element. And to the left of that element, you're going to have a, par a list which is partially, which is sorted. So the, the, to the left of the thing that you're picking is already a sorted list. Then what you do is you grab this thing and you keep looking where inside this already sorted list you're supposed to insert it. Right? So I'm, I'm starting with a two and I'm going to look through all these different numbers. I'm going to stop at the first element which is less than this number. So I keep going, keep going, oh I got to this point, I go to this one, okay? So now here I'm starting, I'm gonna keep going and keep going until I get to the three which is the only, which is the first number that is not greater than this or it's the first number that's less than the four. So that's the insert sort, okay? We're, the easiest way to think about it is just think of it, think of this thing as, uh, you know, after, after we have already kind of sorted the list, okay? And it will work for, you know, from the very beginning also, all right? So here it is with the little picture, right? You have some kind of a marked player. To the left of the marked player, you already have all these other ones sorted. What you're going to do is you're gonna pull this player out of the line and you're not gonna be doing swapping because swapping actually is, you know, a little bit time consuming, right? If you, especially if you're talking about big, big data structures that you have created. You're trying to swap these things around in memory takes a long time. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull this one out of the out of the line, we're gonna put it into some temp variable, and then we're just gonna keep moving these to the right. So move this one to the right, then after this one has been moved, then you move the next one to the right, and then after this one has been moved, you go to the next one, etc., etc. So you just shift them one to the right. No swapping though, okay? kind of the way that we did the shifting with the delete and the insert, okay? Same kind of thing, no swapping. And then as soon as we get to the point where we find a player which is, let, which is smaller than this one, you stop, right? And as soon as you stop, you, you have already at that point shifted all the other ones to the right, and then you insert the marked player in the correct spot, okay? And that's it. So that's how it works, and then you go to the next one, and you're gonna repeat the process. You're gonna pull this one out of the line. When you pull this one out of the line, then you start shifting the next one to the left of it, one to the right, then the one next to it, one to the right, then the one next to it, one to the right, 
until you finally reach a player which is smaller than this one, the marked one, and that's where you stop and then you insert, okay? And that's the insert sort. And the insert sort is something like this, okay? So it looks a little bit more, you know, more involved, but basically what we're saying is, okay, you're telling it, okay, so first of all, you're gonna have a loop that starts at one, because you're assuming you're starting at the first player, so you're gonna, you're not, again, like with the previous sort, you don't have to compare a player to itself, okay? So you start at one, and you go to the end of the, you know, the list of the players, okay? Then what you're going to do is you have an, a loop inside of this thing, and the loop goes on while in, right? While in is greater than one, okay? So I have written this thing stuff kind of like this. So you have uh, left of out is your sorted subarray. You're going to store the elements of out in temp, right? So that's how you that's how you pull the player out of the line, right? So temp is equal to the array in, which is the one that you're marking. You're going to find where the element at out is supposed to go in, a, in the sorted sub array left of out. You're going to shift right all elements of the sub array, which are greater than the element at out. And you're going to insert the, the temp where it's supposed to go, which is all the way at the end. Okay, so how do we, how do we improve the efficiency of the previous loop? Well, we got rid of the swap. Okay, swapping takes a little bit more time than just making something equal to something else. Okay, so it's better for us to pull the player out to the side, then shift all the other ones, and then insert it in the correct spot than it is for us to swap every two players as we go through them. So this is how you make this thing more efficient. And again, if you know if, if you are working with different kinds of data, if if you know if you noticed, let's say for example, right there, we're perfect at the eight, right? There's no, for an eight, which is already bigger than the, all these other ones, I don't have to do a whole lot of work at all. I don't have to shift any of these other players, right? So if I, if I have the list already sorted to the left and the thing that I'm trying to insert is bigger than all these other ones, then I don't have to do any kind of a movement, okay? And because of that, the insertion sort is actually better. Okay, and it is better for certain types of data. It's better for data that has already been kind of sorted a little bit. Okay, because then you don't have to do a whole, a whole lot of shifting. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Okay, so this is your loop in there. Uh, and I have a bunch of comments in, in here to show you how this thing works out. Again, what I would recommend for you to do is dissect this thing. Right, so don't, don't look at the whole thing at once. We're going to look at only on, on the at the inside of the loop, right? So we're going to ignore the for loop. We're going to manually change these numbers. So initially, out starts at one, which means that my in is equal to be one is going to be equal to one, right? Tem temp is equal to the array in, which is the two, right? Just basically start with a basic array of maybe four things, arrange them in different ways, and see how it works out. That's what I would recommend. Okay, I'm, gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about it too much uh, more, but read, read through what I have. And uh, what do you have to do for today? So are you going to, let me just jump to the class page. We have, oops, wrong page. Okay. So you have a quiz in there which covers material from weeks one through three, or one, part three. Uh, and then P5, what you have to do is you know, basically read through these things. That's, I guess, that's why I had it in here. Uh, and what you have to do is this. You have to uh, write the void swap, and I give you the code for that. Void the bubbles, write the bubble sort, write the select so sort, uh, write the insert sort, write a delete index, uh, write a no dubs, no duplicates, and write an insert or insert an order. Okay? And I think maybe I should get rid of uh, these lecture notes here. 
I think I gave you the freaking answer. Select swords. Do I have no dubs in here? Let me see. No, it isn't. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. Uh, there is a delete index. Yeah, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna give you this file because What's your question? Yes. Huh? I, I don't know what you're saying. Okay, so any questions? We got it? All right, so everything that you need is in there. Uh, if you are missing something, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. You know, send me your emails. Come see me in the office hours. But that's it. That's all we have for this week. Just the basic swords. And then next week, we're going to start talking about stacks and queues. Okay, which is the net, I guess the second data structures or second and third types of data structures that we're going to deal with. Okay. So that's all for today. Thanks for coming, and I will see you next time.